Never go to the liquor store in the hood. If y'all want to get, you and your homies don't want to get drunk, y'all want to go, y'all, you drive to the birds. I don't care where it is. Drive somewhere where it's on the outskirts or something. Don't be driving it to the hood store and thinking it's sweet. Then it ain't even about to be tough. Like, I'm not shook. I can go there. I can go to any store I want to in. But I guess what? I'm putting myself in a predicament to where I would either have to get into a shootout or somebody kill. By killed. names like Danger, Hitman, and Trouble. And now they are behind bars. This week, the feds busted a gang known as the Playboy Gangster Crips. And neighbors say they terrorized a northwest Detroit neighborhood for years. Let's get to Sean Leahy. He's live tonight. And Sean, neighbors were literally cheering when they heard this news. Karen, absolutely. These neighbors were cheering this news of the Playboy Gangster Crips gang being taken down from this west side. The Big Apple Market on McGraw in southwest Detroit was the scene of a murder in April, now connected to the Latin Count Street Gang. U.S. Attorney Barbara McQuaid stood with Detroit's police chief and members of the state police and FBI to announce 33 indictments tied to the Detroit, gang. Detroit, Michigan, a city with a rich industrial history has also been the backdrop for a complex tapestry of gang activity, marked by the presence of various groups including Crips, Bloods, Vice Lords, and Gangster Disciples. This landscape has been shaped by waves of migration, social upheaval, and economic shifts, leading to the emergence and evolution of gangs that mirror the city's own transformation, from the early days of ethnic-based gangs to the rise of more organized entities driven by the drug trade. Detroit's streets have seen the rise of formidable groups like the Playboy Gangster Crips, Seven Mile Rolling Sixties Crips, and Bright Moor Gangster Disciples. Among others, these groups have not only battled for territorial dominance, but have also left an indelible mark on the city's cultural fabric, influencing everything from local neighborhoods to the music industry. In the early 20th century, Detroit's gangs were primarily ethnic-based formed by immigrants from Europe who settled in various hoods. These early gangs were involved in bootlegging, especially during Prohibition in the 1920s, and other illegal activities. After World War II, Detroit experienced significant demographic shifts and economic changes, leading to the rise of new gangs. The 1950s and 60s saw the emergence of street gangs in predominantly African-American neighborhoods, often as a response to social and economic disenfranchisement. The 1970s and 1980s marked a significant period in Detroit's gang history. With the rise of more organized and violent gangs, this era saw the emergence of gangs like Young Boys Inc. and the Errol Flynn's, which were involved in drug trafficking. The drug trade became a major source of income for gangs during this time leading to increased violence and territorial disputes. Absolutely, these neighbors were cheering this news of the Playboy Gangster Crips gang being taken down from this west side neighborhood. It's a big deal. And the original reason why the ATF went into that neighborhood in the first place is all about a three-year-old little girl being shot. These are images of an ATF roundup Thursday of a street gang operating on Detroit's west side. The reaction from people living here on Trinity Street sounds like this. Lord have mercy. I'm so happy that they did, um, they did that, make it safe for my grandbaby. 14 members of a gang calling itself the Playboy Gangster Crips have been busted for murder, armed robbery, carjacking, gun sales, drug pushing, each member with their own gang name like Shady Blue, Havoc, and Danger. Well, at one point, they were one of the most violent gangs on the streets of Detroit. The Playboy Gangster Crips didn't just settle scores. They targeted children and bragged about all of it online. Dive into the world of the Playboy Gangster Crips, also known as the Trey Trays or the 33rd Gangsters, a set that commands respect and fear in equal measure. The name of 33 Sav Gang pays tribute to a legendary figure within their ranks, Savage, also known as Tony Bands. Despite his GD affiliation, Savage's fearless nature earned him unparalleled respect across the set embodying the true spirit of what they stand for. This set, riding under the six, showcases an unbreakable bond among its members, a testament to their resilience and unity, even in the face of adversity, including significant legal challenges that threaten their very existence. The Playboy Gangster Crips stand tall, their HUD remains a hive of activity, a clear signal that their spirit remains unbroken. The mile rolling 60s Crips stand as a testament to resilience and tenacity in the face of adversity. Nestled on Seven Mile, this relatively small set has carved out a reputation for its formidable nature, holding its ground amidst a sea of larger, formidable rivals. For years, they've maintained control over their territory, 
a remarkable feat considering the pressures from surrounding groups. Recently, however, tensions with the Playboys have begun to test their stronghold, revealing vulnerabilities in what seemed an impenetrable front. Intriguingly, this set distinguishes itself by not aligning with the traditional six affiliation, a rarity that adds a layer of complexity to their identity within the broader gang landscape. Explore the legacy of the bright more gangster disciples, a name that echoes through the streets of Detroit with a resonance unmatched by many. Bright Moor stands out as a unique stronghold in the city's complex tapestry of gang territories, its very name synonymous with the formidable presence of this historic set. Unlike many other groups in Detroit, the Bright Moor Gangster Disciples have achieved something remarkable, an unyielding grip over their neighborhood, a testament to their enduring influence and organized structure. This set's story is one of resilience and strategic control navigating the tumultuous landscape of gang rivalries while steadfastly holding their ground. The Bright Moor Gangster Disciples are not just active. They are a dominant force, a central figure in the narrative of Detroit's gang history. Their ability to maintain authority over Bright Moor, despite the numerous challenges and conflicts they face, speaks volumes about their cohesion and Now would you look at that? Left is stinking with his looking ass. He fried the goofy like a n took a cooking class. Charged the f when that bully smack. They ain't gon' get him back. I ain't slipping, I'm on tip. I s his lips. Pockets on the grip, pocket rocket if you trip. Wake up in the bank, I can I collect my chips. And the more came inside, man, just give me all that shit. that coco, and I'm off through narco. I see the popo, and I see the narcs though. I heard you toto. Y'all like y'all don't get no cool points for Jizzle, bro. Jizzle wasn't trying to be in no beef. Y'all don't get no cool points. Y'all ain't try to pull a move on nobody who really doing something. So what's going on? AJ was not a Glock boy. That nigga was definitely Band Gang. Band Gang and Shred Gang, two prominent groups in Detroit's urban landscape, have carved out a significant presence beyond traditional gang affiliations. While not officially tied to the Bloods, many members within these groups align with the Five Point Star, often associated with the People Nation Alliance, which includes vice lords among its ranks. This unique blend of affiliations showcases the fluid nature of gang and group identities in Detroit, where cultural and musical influences often intersect with street allegiances. Leshore Street, colloquially known as L Block, stands as a testament to their influence, serving as a central hub for their activities. The groups have also made a notable impact in the music industry, with members like Band Gang Biggs and Shred Gang Moan gaining recognition in the rap scene. Their music not only reflects their life experiences, but also serves as a voice for their community, narrating the challenges, aspirations, and realities of street life. Three dozen violent criminals are off the streets. The U.S. attorney says that they have ties to the Latin Counts gang in southwest Detroit. And as Fox News' Robin Schwartz reports, the arrests are part of a joint effort called Detroit One. The Big Apple Market on McGraw in southwest Detroit was the scene of a murder in April, now connected to the Latin Counts street gang. U.S. Attorney Barbara McQuaid stood with Detroit's police chief and members of the state police and FBI to announce 33 indictments tied to the gang, believed to be responsible for the murder of 20-year-old Mustafa al Yasiri. The almighty Toledo Mafia Latin Counts, originating from the 6,500 block of Toledo Street, stand as a formidable presence with roots that trace back to Chicago's Latin Counts. This transition to Detroit in the 1980s marked the expansion of their influence, embedding themselves deeply within the city's fabric, known for their distinctive red and black attire. These members proudly align with the People Nation, a testament to their enduring loyalty and unity. Despite facing numerous indictments, their activities remain unabated a clear sign of their resilience and determination to maintain their stronghold. This cycle of legal challenges has only fueled their notoriety, making the almighty Toledo Mafia Latin Counts a symbol of both resistance and controversy within the community. No plan. Hella VVs when you see me. They turn their back, then peep that they need me. I'm out of freebies because I rather shop freely. 
Damn, these boys disgusting. I'm lounging in a lounge, having big boy discussions. Just making sure my kids ain't gotta resort to hustling. I'm chilling on resorts for times that I was struggling. Finkel Avenues, also known as the Finkel Avenue Boys, have etched a significant chapter in Detroit's extensive gang history, with roots that run deep into the city's past. They've managed to coexist alongside other notable groups like the Puritan Boys and Vice Lords, navigating the complex web of gang dynamics within their territory. What sets the Fencol Avenues apart is their focus on economic pursuits over territorial disputes or active rivalries. This pragmatic approach to gang life emphasizes their primary objective, financial gain. Their impact extends beyond the streets and into the cultural realm with figures such as Payroll Giovanni emerging from their ranks to make a mark in the rap music scene through his art. The narrative of the Fenkel Avenues and their ethos of prioritizing economic advancement over gang conflicts is further propagated, offering a glimpse into the motivations that drive their operations. Never go to the liquor store in the hood. If y'all want to get, you and your homies you don't want to get drunk, y'all want to go, y'all, you drive to the birds. I don't care where it is. Drive somewhere where it's on the outskirts or something. Don't be driving it to the hood store thinking it's sweet. Then it ain't even bother being tough. Like, I'm not shook. I can go there. I can go to any store I want to. And, but I guess what? I'm putting myself in a predicament where I would either have to get into a shootout or somebody kill me. Running up my bands, go roll right above my hands. Same color, some Zans. You a fool, Tino, keep the toolie. Ruga with the roly. Pull the loose, smoke you like a loose. Chop it with the cool. Ain't no more. Blood walk. Blood walk. Since you talking gay shit, let me feel it. Ain't saying nothing. I ain't never heard of it. Watch what you say. Pull up where your baby mama stay. Broad day, no shirt on. Let the llama spray. The Bloods of East Seven Mile and Albion, also known as the A Block Brennan Boys, represent a distinct faction within Detroit's complex gang landscape, situated in a specific enclave of the city. This group has carved out its own identity and territory, contributing to the intricate mosaic of gang affiliations in Detroit. Their moniker, A Block, signifies not just a geographical location, but also a sense of community and belonging among its members. The group has gained additional notoriety through the involvement of individuals in the music industry, most notably Smoke Camp Chino. As a popular rapper, Smoke Camp Chino has brought a spotlight to the A Block Brennan Boys, using his platform to express narratives that reflect the realities and experiences of gang life in Detroit. Through his music, the challenges, aspirations, and day to day experiences of the group are articulated, offering a window into a world that is often misunderstood. The 07B, an expanse of black pea stones set located along the seven mile stretch, stands as a formidable presence within Detroit's complex gang landscape, with deep seated roots in notable locales, such as the Imperial Manor housing apartments and the Park Plaza apartments. The black pea stones have established a significant stronghold in this area, while the renovation of the country house apartments has slightly reduced their visibility there. Their influence remains palpable across their traditional territories. This group is known for its extensive network, with connections that possibly extend to shared territories with the nearby mob assassin Pyrus, indicating a complex tapestry of alliances and territorial demarcations. Operating under the banner of the Five, the O7B actively distinguishes itself from sets aligned with the Six, setting the stage for long-standing rivalries that define much of their interactions with other groups. The East Side Ruling 80s Skyline Pyrus represents a unique chapter in Detroit's gang narrative, embodying the transposition of gang culture from one city to another. Despite their roots on the west side of Detroit, they carry the East Side moniker as a homage to their origins in the eastern part of San Diego, California, illustrating the complex identities that often characterize gang affiliations. As one of Detroit's most prominent Pyrus gangs, their influence spans across various neighborhoods though it's important to highlight that their presence on the west side is among their few concentrated areas. This distinct positioning underscores the fluid nature of gang territories and the ongoing negotiations of power and space within the urban landscape. At one point, their influence extended towards the iconic Eight Mile Boundary, but these confrontations have reshaped the map of their control. Yeah, 50's on. What you hearing about, baby? I was f***ing six years old, my older cousin blew his head off. All that gang gang sh you gonna be up under the fucking jail getting gang gang. I mean, it was it was united, but it was crazy. It's you together. will never get a chance to f with a nigga like me again. Now get off my cousin porch. It's on the floor, man. We're doing something for the community, for the hood. We're giving them bikes back. I'm just running up my pros. I put my AP on, I doubled up my hoes. Ain't the blow, man.
again, I'm the snowman cause I'm froze And use both hands, I'm in the kitchen with the bows I'm to count the money up, on the cover of my nose Walk straight out of jail, fresh enough to strike a pole The I-94 Pyrus Gang, aka 50 Zone Which later evolved into the Bloods of Gratiot and Van Dyke Marked its inception in 1997 Establishing a notable presence in Detroit's gang landscape This set, rooted in a strategic location that amplifies its influence has been pivotal in shaping the local dynamics of gang affiliation and culture. Their alliance with SMB underscores the complex network of relationships and alliances that define the gang ecosystem in the city. This group has not only made its mark through its activities on the streets, but has also significantly impacted the music scene in Detroit. Rappers such as Sada Baby, Skilla Baby, Big Co, and 50s Swin have emerged from this set, bringing a unique voice and narrative to the forefront of the industry. Through their music, these artists convey the realities, struggles, and experiences of life within the bloods of Gratiot and Van Dyke, offering a vivid portrayal of their world. The narrative of gangs in Detroit is a complex one, interwoven with the city's broader socio-economic challenges and cultural dynamics. From the historical roots of the I-94 Pyru gang to the modern-day influence of sets like the Smoke Camp and 07B Black Pea Stones, these groups reflect the resilience creativity, and sometimes the desperation of communities navigating life in a city that has faced its fair share of adversity. While the names and territories may change, the underlying themes of identity, survival, and community remain constant, offering a window into the enduring human need for belonging and the search for a place within the urban landscape. As Detroit continues to evolve, so too will the story of its gangs, serving as a poignant reminder of the city's past and a potential guidepost for its future.